Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. I've been teaching English for over 10 years now and I want to talk to you today about 10 steps to help you overcome your fear in speaking English. If you don't overcome your fear, you are very slow to progress. So let's get right into it. Step number one is really just to acknowledge your fear. Because if you have uncontrolled anxiety, there's nothing wrong with being a little nervous, but if it's uncontrolled, it actually reduces your ability to process language in real time. Simply put, your brain feels like it's shutting down. So we don't want that. Step two, you have to identify your problem areas. What are you having trouble with? Is it putting sentences together? Is it understanding the other person? Is it that people speak too quickly? Is it vocabulary? And you should also make sure that you're trying not to put your thoughts together while the other person is talking. You truly have to listen and then give your response, even if you have to think for a moment. Which leads us to step number three, practice listening. Use the radio, TV, and movies. You can use the subtitles or the closed caption, but practice your listening. You have to remember that your brain is going to work harder in conversation. When you're just passively listening, it's not going to work as hard as when you're actually involved in true conversation. Step number four, you have to let go of perfection. You have to remember when you first start speaking English, you're going to speak a broken version of it first, which means you will be making mistakes and you'll continue to make mistakes. So embrace your mistakes, you know, fix them and move on. In the long term, you will become a better conversationalist and get more comfortable with conversation. Step five, many students forget to do this, smile. It actually relaxes you when you smile. And when someone smiles back at you, don't you feel more relaxed? The tendency is to smile at them. So you will put your listener at ease and you will feel more relaxed. Start with a hello and be friendly and smile. Step number six, start with one-on-one -on -one conversation. So if you're in a group of natives, they are going to speak more quickly, of course. So if you can just pick one off or corner one person, you'll be more comfortable one-on-one. -on -one. It's a little bit easier to deal with uh, than a group of people. Step number seven, you have to make sure that you're keeping control of the speed of the conversation. So if you start the conversation by speaking slower and clearer, they are going to match your speed. If they don't match your speed, that's okay. If they're not getting the hint, you have to come out and say, can you please speak slower? I'm just a learner. I don't like students saying, oh, I speak bad and apologizing and apologizing. No, you really don't need to apologize. Just let them know that you're still learning and if they could speak a little bit slower. So you don't need to feel so apologetic. Step number eight, don't get discouraged if the conversation doesn't go well. What I'd like you to do is analyze why it didn't go well. Again, was it that they were speaking too fast? Was it that you understood half of the words? Why didn't it go well? So you, can need to, you need to analyze that. Just remember, it's not always you. Sometimes students feel they did something wrong. Sometimes you did everything right. You were clear, you spoke slowly. The person just didn't get it. Well, it could be that they're just impatient or they're absolutely rude. <laughs> Or it could be that they're not used to hearing your accent. You have to remember the brain needs a little time to understand accents and pick up your particular speech pattern. For example, if you go to a store and you ask for help and you have to speak English, the person in the store, that worker in the store, is not expecting someone to come up and have a Chinese accent, for example, or a Portuguese accent or an Italian accent. And so their first response might be, what? <laughs> their brain is just trying to adjust to the accent. As you start to speak a little bit longer, you'll notice it will be a little bit easier for the person. So just remember, sometimes it's their problem. It's not your problem. We are up to step nine. Um, you need to practice everyday conversation. So if you are in restaurants or at the store, you're out and about, talk to people. The longer you wait to talk someone the, to them, the harder it will be. So if there's a neighbor that you just 
keep wanting to talk to you. I'm going to talk to them today. No, tomorrow I'm going to talk to them. It gets harder. Just do it. Just start and don't worry about your mistakes. And step number 10, the last one, try to visit places where there are English speakers. So you might be in a country where you know there are tourists in a particular area. So go to that area and talk to them. Tourists typically love to speak English. Uh, tell them, you know, where you're from. Ask them how they like the country, how they like the food. You can volunteer. So there might be some places where you can interact with people and just volunteer at a business so you can talk to more English-speaking people. Possibly you can live abroad. I know at the time of this recording, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so that might be more difficult. But when things start to open up, maybe you can do a little bit more traveling with the idea to speak more English. So those are the top 10 tips or steps to overcoming your fear.